Hello everybody. Today's uh, message is on weekly gospel reflections. Uh, today I'm going to talk about children and family and relationships. And uh, so hopefully you guys like the message today. So today we're going to talk about children and families relationships. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the relationship at home because as you know we're all under the lockdown and can't really go anywhere. We're all kind of stuck. So what do you do, right? So t today I'm going to talk about that. Uh, sure you can get out and about but some areas are still restricted. You can't get in some areas. But So today you're at home and uh, as you know, you're with someone for two weeks solid. Uh, you may go to church, you may go to town together, get things. But really, overall, you're still with them. We're looking at Ephesians today, uh, chapter 6, verses 2 and 3. Uh, Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise that it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy long life on this earth. What does that mean? That means long life on this earth. That means that uh, the God is saying, listen, you got to honor your mother and father. Now, I know that my mom and dad, uh, for me, is, is they're not here anymore. And, uh, man, I miss them. I have to tell you, I miss them. Uh, is there things I could change? Yes, I, could, I would try to change uh, quite a few things. I would see them more. Uh, forget the job. Forget the jobs. Forget the life. Because really, job's just a job. It's just a, a material thing. And really, at the end, it really doesn't matter. You know, in the Bible, there are many chapters about relationships with God. Family, friends, husbands, wives, children. For me, personally, as you know, men require one simple thing in life. Respect. And respect the men and women and ladies. But men are very simple in that aspect. They just requ require it. respect. Honor thy father and thy mother, little children. And little children can be somebody 50 years old or 60 years old. Mom and dad is still on this earth. Or mama and papa. You may have one family member that's not here with you, but you still have family. You know, when I was growing up, we did not disrespect. If mom and dad said, go, go dig a ditch uh, 20 feet long, uh, 6 feet deep, we just went and did it. Did we grumble? A ah, little, you know, but we just went and did it because you've got to do it anyway, right? So by not doing it is something that is not in our picture because we knew that my father would pull out the belt and we would end up doing it anyway. So it's just better go ahead and do it. Children nowadays murmur. They murmur and they talk back. And there's not too much you can do about it, but there's certain things that you can do is give them respect and let them get respect from you. If they don't give you respect, it's the time. It's the times we're in. And as you know, honor thy father and mother. God says that you need to honor thy father and thy mother, and you will be blessed. If you do not honor thy father and thy mother, you will not be blessed. Every parent on this earth is flawed. All parents have flaws. No parent is perfect. No human being is perfect. Without the parents on this earth, where would all the children be? Where would I be? I would not be here. Mr. Tom would not be here at all if I didn't have my mom and papa. What do I do? Well, I thank the Lord every day that I have them. We all know what happens if we if my mother and father didn't get together, I wouldn't be here doing this. So I thank my mother and father every day of my life. I always have. I was a loving son to my mom and papa. Always have been. The only thing I can say is I did not always see them when I could. I was traveling a lot. God chose the DNA to make us all unique. A lot of people don't really realize. God chose you. He knew exactly what you are going to be but when, before you are even born. He sent you here. He knew exactly what you are going to be, where you are going to be 100 years from now, where you're going to, what's going to transpire in the 40 years or 60 years or whatever years you are going to be here on this earth. If we look at Psalms 139, 13. For you created my utmost being, inmost being, you knit me together with my mother's womb. And what that means is basically God already knew that he was going to put you in that particular mother. 
He knew that that father was going to be there. And it's not accidental that it happened that way. God knows everything. He knew that there's going to be time for everybody. And it's like me. God knew that I was going to be here in the Philippines. He knew it. He knew it. He knew it. He knew it. He knew that I was going to be here, that my job, my specialty was take care of R.R. He knew that I was going to be here. Now, the thing about it is, the same thing goes to my many friends. I guarantee if they look in their heart, they will really know. If you, if you, we are to honor our mother and father in Ephesians 6 and 1, 6 1. We to honor our mother and father. Sometimes we need to look at the Lord and say, I have any father. I'm trying to do the very best I can. I'm really not able, I, I can't seem to get through my children. Keep praying. Keep praying. Never give up. Honor thy, honor your mother and father, your son and daughter. You must honor them because that is the only thing that you're going to really re regret later on in life. No one is perfect. Everybody watching this on this video, whatever views I get, is going to say, is going to be watching this and saying that the Heavenly Father is perfect and we are not. But someone in life, as you know, when you grow up as a child, you, I, I never really, we never really have a problem of disrespect around our house. My neighbors are telling me, my friends are telling me they're having a problem with the children. Children are talking back to them. They're not really doing what they're supposed to do. They tell them to go brush your teeth, and they go in the bathroom and turn the water on. I think all kids do that to a certain extent. But there's a lot of too much murmuring going on. There's too much murmuring. And what that means, maybe you need to introduce the Heavenly Father, thy God, into the life of me a little bit more deeply. That does not going to make it perfect, but it may help. You have to show respect for everyone. Elderly, elderly is not shown respect that they should. If you look at all the countries in the world, all the countries in the world, take a look at USA. USA right now is okay. Children, 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 take care of children. They're going to take care of you know children, children. But how many children don't call you on your birthday? How many children don't come to see you on your birthday? How many children in the U.S. don't really take the time? But get this. You take Asian countries, all the uh, countries like Italy and France, they're family-oriented. What I mean, they go to the gatherings. When there's a gathering, every Sunday they go there. In Proverbs 13.1, a wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a mocker does not listen. Rebuke. When a child disrespects a father or mother, it's not good. Because if you look at Proverbs 23, 22, listen to your father who gave you life, and do not despise your mother when she is old. And do, do people do that? Sometimes they do. <clears throat> God knows. As, as you know, we all have to be told what to do sometimes. And we're not always happy when God, uh, when God tells us or a parent tell us or somebody tell us what to do. As you know, you got to go through life and you got to be told things you're not going to like to do. <clears throat> I need more sales. I need this. I need that. I need this. I need that. You need to go do this. You need to go do that. You need to do this on your job and you have to do a better job at it. How many times have you been told to do something and you say, man, I'm not listening to this guy anymore. I'm going to do it on my own. But you really overall, unless you have the knowledge or expertise, you have to stick it out and you have to do it until. So as you know, a lot of times people hate doing it. Children hate it more than anything else. You tell a child to do something. Why is it always me to ask me to do that? Why is it me? I always do everything all the time. I am so tired of doing everything. Why do I have to do everything? Why don't you ask someone else to do it? Well, that is a child's response. Is it natural? It's natural. But you have to explain to them that no matter what I tell you to do, you kind of need to do it because you know what? I'm not going to be the only one telling you the things to do. Are you going to be a lonely person sitting on the side of the road with no future in your life because a boss is going to be a lot harder than your parents are? Your parents let you get away with a lot of things. Your parents let you do a lot of things you normally wouldn't be able to do. You can't take a nap on a job. You can't do this on a job. You can't do that on a job. Some do. They don't get away with it very long and they get dismissed really fast. I think a lot of times, listen to your father and mother is very important. When you hate to be told to do things sometimes, we all hate it. But if you look at Proverbs 6 again, verses 20 through 23. 
My son, keep your father's commands that do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them on your heart forever. Fasten them around your neck, and when you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will speak to you. For these commands are a lamp. This teaching is a light and correction discipline all the way of life. That's the thing. You've got to take the time to listen to the mother and father because a lot of times they're teaching you even though you're not listening. And I learned that early on. My father was actually teaching me and I wasn't listening. But you know what? We all do that. Parenting is the hardest job. It's really hard. Raising a child is really hard. When was the last time you really took the time to appreciate your mother and father? The parents... Did maybe a lot? There's a lot of parents right now that don't choose to have children. They don't want children. They don't want. I'm not pay, paying a quarter million dollars to raise a child. Are you kidding me? I want money. I want things. I want to have things. I don't want a child. There are a lot of Americans and people throughout the world that just don't want children. But you know something? The ones that do have children, it is harder these days, I think. Now, granted, I had. <clears throat> children in my past that I helped raise and my children and the thing of it is they all came out fine they're, they're fine but they did not give me the hassle that the children's giving everybody hassle now R is fine she does fine but I'm talking about I hear people I hear them arguing and fighting all the time the neighbor over here I'm not doing that I just did my laundry I gotta do her laundry too <clears throat> you don't really realize people do hear you though they do hear you my cost, I cost my parents plenty of money. Ditching school, trouble, sickness, dentists like crazy, got in a fight, my teeth were knocked out, all my front teeth are knocked out, it cost my dad a fortune, my bottom teeth I got hit baseball bat. My father spent a fortune on my dental, he spent a fortune on me, my brothers. My father, yeah, sure, he was at school a couple times, but you know, overall, we were pretty good kids, but I still cost him a lot of money. You know, even when I got 30 years old, I cost him money, only because you have hard times. Uh, do you go back to your parents? Sure you do. I remember going to my father, Dad, I really need a couple thousand dollars. Why do you need a job? Well, this is the reason, A, B, C, D. Oh, I, oh okay. Uh, I, I'll pay it back. Okay, all right. He gave it to me. I paid him back with interest. But my father was smart. He took that money. I paid him back. He put it in the bank in my name. That $2,000 after about, I don't know how many years, he had a little bit more to it. it the time he, he, was, he loved banking. He really gets into banking. That $2,000 ended up being, you know, $3,000. And he ended up being a large, large sum of money. So, uh... It, 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 he's, that's the thing. You need to take the time and really appreciate. He didn't tell me he did that. He didn't tell me anything. Uh, make the wrongs right before it's too late. Make all wrongs right before it's too late. Showing respect to the elderly. I remember my mother and father telling me, Would you say? I said, Dad, Mom, I didn't say anything. You said something to me, and I didn't say anything back. Oh, I thought you said something. No. I, I learned early on, and I'm talking early on in age. There's no benefit in talking back to your parents. Uh, you know, what are you going to do, get mad? And at the end of the day, it really didn't matter. But, you know, here's the thing. When you're a mother and father, and you have a children, or you have stepchildren, or you have children in your house, whether they're adopted or children, you feed them, you clothe them, you give them everything they have to have, the dentist, the dentist care. You know, I did this survey, uh, went online, I went on the Harvard, uh, they did a survey back in, it was last year, 2020, Harvard did a study. Zero to 18, to raise a child, $249,000, so 12 million peso. 12 million peso to raise a child from zero to 18. <coughs> now why? It would cost that much money. Well, you know what it does because uh, it's the uh, little things add up. Little things, the shoes, slippers. Uh, I know for me, uh, it's not that expensive. But then again, too, you start adding it up and adding it up and adding it up. But I'm not one of those guys that I count and worry about that. Think about if you were a child, 
It is a sin if you disrespect your parents. It's a sin. Automatic. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Honor thy father and thy mother. It's a sin. If you talk back, it's a sin. Because the Lord knows what comes back out this way. This is the tongue. Everybody knows that's the dirtiest thing on the human body, right? It is the tongue. Because it always, always... Because no parent's perfect. you got to kind of forgive them for things that they make mistakes about. I remember my father telling me one time, I told you to do this. And he didn't tell me. But I didn't argue with him. I said, okay, Dad. I didn't know you told me. I told you to do this. Okay, Dad, I'll take care of it. Done. Done deal. I went out and I took care of it. And that's the thing. You sometimes, because you know what? It didn't matter if I did. Did you wash that car? Uh, yeah. You did? Yeah. You told me to wash it every uh, every Sunday, and I wash it every Sunday. I didn't. I don't quarrel about it. I'm the only one that does it. My brothers don't do anything. No, my, you know, my brothers didn't do anything, but they did. He would have them doing other things. If you keep a child busy, it's always good, because I learned a lot of things by staying busy. I learned how to detail a car. I knew that for sure. But you know as well as I do, what happens a lot of times, respect your family no matter what. Respect your mother and father. Forgive your parents because they really, really try to do the very best they can. They're not always going to be right on everything all the time. They're going to make fault. They're going to have faulting items. You know, like, <coughs> for an example, one of the children, I heard him outside complaining because the mother had them going getting wood. And he was complaining to the mother. And I asked, what is he complaining about? He said, he's complaining about getting wood. That's all I ever do, he said. Ruth said. That's all I ever do is go get wood. I am tired of getting wood. And the mother said, do you want to eat food? Do you want to eat today? Yes. Well, how do you expect me to cook the wood when I have to cook and clean and do everything? And a little thing I ask you to do, you will not do for me. We sometimes need to think about what? is really in store. Is it going to hurt that person to go do what they need to do? Are they going to, go, going to complain? They're going to complain every day of their life. They're going to complain every second. They're going to complain about everything. But really overall, when a child, well, i got to tell you, you have to learn to forgive your children for what they do. They need to forgive you for what you do. Because if you forgive them and they forgive you, because later on in their life, as a parent, they're going to need you. They're going to need that forgiveness from you for the things they do, whether they're 2 or 5 or 10 or, or 20. Somewhere along the lines, I had to go back to my father, and I had to ask him, will you forgive me for what I did? And I, I did. And I, I was 25. I'd already left the house. I'd been gone in the house about 11 years at that time. And I was 25. I had moved out early because I could. I graduated school early. So I could. And no, no, it was perfect. I mean, fine. And no problem at the house. I just wanted to do it. And it's not like I was that far from him. It's like from, from it's like a, a, a mile to two miles from him. So he'd drive by my house every day. Make sure it's okay. And basically, I just kind of want to live on my own. And after I got out, I said, I want to move back. And he, I called him. I said, can I move back? He said, I said, will you forgive me? He said, of course I'll forgive you. You can come back anytime you want. Your room's still there. Go in. Because I realized I cannot do everything I'm supposed to be able to do on a small salary. I cannot survive. I cannot live. I cannot do anything. Because making the money, I don't care. I was making a dollar and sixty cents an hour doing everything I do, working forty hours a week, and it was no money. It was no money because time to take taxes out was no money. Because you have a car, even if the car is paid for, my car was paid for. But the thing of it is, you still have fuel, you have food, you have electricity, you have water, you have gas. You have everything, gas, propane, gas. So, as you know, I don't have to sit here and explain it. So I learned really early on that, hey, my dad and mom really weren't bad at all. And it took me about eight months to realize that. And so I moved back. I did. And I moved back for like, it wasn't long, uh, probably six or eight months to get my mindset and maybe a little longer. Everything, I mean, I contributed. I do whatever I need to do. But I was smart about it. And what I mean by that is I, I always help my mama and papa out. My dad says, I bought a piece of property, and I want you guys to pull all your money together, and let's go, and let's make this a big piece, and we'll put all our houses on it, 
and we'll get like 100 uh, acres, maybe 200 acres, and we'll put houses on it. And it'll be our property. Stupid me, I know that. I don't want to invest in that. I don't want no cows. I don't want no property. I don't want any of that. I don't want to do that. Stupidest mistake I ever did. I wish I did. My father later on did buy a big piece of property, and he sold it for a hundred times of what it was worth. It was really, he was, my father was smart that way. And I just didn't listen to him because I was smarter than him, I thought. And really overall, I was just like him. It's just I didn't want to listen. Listen to your mother and father. Listen to thy heavenly father in heaven. He'll guide you. God bless everybody. I hope you enjoyed this long message. God bless.